Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our EcoBulk project final conference. We are very glad to have you here this morning. Um, my name is Jose Uribe. I work for the International Solid Waste Association, and I have had the undoubted pleasure of being the communications and disseminations uh, person for this project for the last four and a half years. Um, I have the honor as well to introduce to you today the consortium and their hard work for the last uh, four and a half years. I hope you will uh, enjoy learning all about um, our great innovations and the wonderful job that our consortium partners have done so far in this project. So without further ado, I will give you very a short introduction first um, as to uh, uh, the project, and then I will hand over to our first speaker, Luis Romeral, uh, who is the project coordinator. So what is the project about? Circularity for composites, uh, as I like to put it, from concepts to reality. The idea behind it, of course, is that it was a, a, a large scale demonstrator. Uh, we had 30 partners, uh, 12 million euros in budget. It took us four and a half years. We uh, dealt with three sectors, the automotive, furniture and construction. We went through two coordinators and of course, one pandemic. Um, and all of our partners, of course, were very important and instrumental to the hard work and the success of the project so far, which I have commemorated by putting all the pictures there for you so you can see how we've aged through the process. Um, we, as I said, we've uh, tackled three different uh, sectors. So we have the furniture sector, the building sector, and the automotive sector. Um, very quick uh, a look at uh, some of the interesting prototypes that you will be introduced to later on. Further, I think it was it's interesting to note that uh, we have 30 uh, uh, partners in our consortium, a uh, multidisciplinary group, uh, anywhere, everywhere from designers to materials manufacturers, product manufacturers, uh, process and logistics experts, waste management recyclers, and environmental engineers which is a lot of different uh, people basically to say that we needed somebody at least to cover all of the different aspects of the circular life cycle. Um, so there was a lot of cooperation, a lot of collaboration for which we are very grateful to everybody for. Why did we do this project? Because composite materials are here to stay. I have a few choice graphs over there that show the growth in their applications and in their market shares. Uh, basically, the uh, composite market is uh, growing uh, at least five to six percent in many different fields. They are very useful for the uh, sustainability uh, or at least developing the sustainability in different industries because they are light and they are durable. And of course, uh, they offer great uh, pro properties compared to standard materials that we've used before in the past. So they are actually very sustainable. But in the end, we have very few options at the moment to uh, for their end of life at the moment. So that's why we went through this uh, process. And last but not least, uh, how we went through this process, basically by the hard work of several different people, uh, including um, our project coordinator at the moment, the uh, UPC team led by Luis Romeral. So I would like to first say a huge thank you to them uh, for guiding us through these last couple of years of the project uh, very successfully. I think it would be also remiss for us not to thank um, the EU H2020 platform that has very kindly uh, funded all of our work for the last four and a half years and for their faith in us in being able to uh, pull this uh, project off. And finally, of course, the hard work of the whole consortium, all of our partners, four and a half years of your lives devoted to this project. Uh, we are extremely grateful for the results. And um, we hope that all of you in the audience as well will enjoy uh, what you're about to see. Before you launch into the uh, full presentations, um, I would like to first introduce to you the project very quickly um, through one of our, or the latest video that we have made. If a picture is worth uh, a thousand words, as they say in the communications industry, then a video apparently is worth about 3,000 euros a minute. So it's very short, 
and very effective in communicating what exactly we have been doing for the last four and a half years, I hope. So without further ado, can you please cue the video? EcoBulk is demonstrating that reusing, refurbishing and recycling composite products is possible, profitable and sustainable. Composite products were redesigned in the furniture, automotive and building sectors, supported by new materials, processes and platforms, enabling a circular life cycle. The EcoBulk design guidelines help manufacturers integrate circularity features into products. Central console parts in cars are difficult to extract and recycle, and recovered materials do not meet aesthetic requirements. With 2K injection molding, aesthetic and structural qualities are met using virgin on top of recycled material. Compatible polymer families ensure recyclability at end of life, whereas zigzag separator obtains high purity textile fibers and plastics from automotive shredder residue. The Vianova hydrogen vehicle uses a modular switch pack with an Elise model extending lifespan and preserving value for 20 years through timely maintenance and refurbishment. This modular concept creates a variety of products by combining simple components. Small damages can lead to entire furniture being thrown away. Parts connected with invisible metal fasteners avoid glue, simplifying replacements. The particle board uses a new eco-friendly binder material that enables up to 50% recycled content, maintaining properties and low emissions. Upholstery is made of recyclable materials and slips on or is attached with a pin. A rental model for institutional furniture, where the manufacturer maintains the furniture, can yield profits after 3.5 years. Extruded composite profiles and panels produced with GFRPs from wind turbine blades, combined with limited virgin material, are suitable for light outdoor structures. The materials are weather resistant and remanufacturable through at least three life cycles. This new patented process provides a high volume, fully circular business model with prices comparable to competing materials and potentially offers a positive net value disposal route. Making good decisions about waste can be tricky. A support system makes suggestions based on data gathered through an end user and stakeholder platform. A QR code is used to track a material's history and inform users on their options. Find out more at ecobulk.eu. Sorry. Um, so thank you <laughs> uh, for your attention for the video. Um, I would like to now introduce to you um, our project coordinator, Luis Rumeral, uh, who works with the uh, UPC, the University Polytechnic University in Catalonia uh, at the MCIA Center. And uh, he's going to give you a quick introduction into uh, at least uh, his role within the project and uh, how the project has been run for the last couple of years. So. Luis, welcome, and thank you for being here. Um, I give the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interaction. And dear attendees, speakers, organizers, first of all, let me to welcome and thank you for attending this conference, the EcoValk final conference in this online format. I would like to especially thank the speakers for their kind collaboration, and to Jose Uribe and Florence Kubil from ISWA, for their dedication and the work made in the framework of the EcoVal project to organize and manage this conference. And before enjoying the presentations included in the conference, let me briefly complete the introduction made on the EcoVal project by Jose. Not the project belongs to the global initiative of the EC for the societal challenge on climate action, environment, resource efficiency, and raw materials. And specifically, to the topic of systemic eco-innovative approaches for the circular economy with large-scale demonstration projects. The main aim of the European eco project is to contribute to closing the loop of composite products in the automotive, furniture and construction sectors by, by promoting circular chain solutions in products, parts and materials, that is, promoting its reusing, upgrading, refurbishing and recycling and demonstrating the design for circular value and supply chains through large-scale demonstrators. 
Now, composite bulk materials and products are a fast growing part of the manufacturing industry. However, and as you know, they are usually uh, difficult to reuse or recycle as the loss of quality and value makes it in general economically unattractive. To face this challenge, EcoVal implements a new economy model by developing new strategies and procedures for the creation of circular design and composite products, value and supply chains for the selected sectors to foster upgrade, reuse and recycling of products and parts, as well as material recovery for re, for re or remanufacturing. And also new services and business models for the new value chain, including collections, maintenance, reuse, tracking and labeling systems, and an integrated database platform, which will share the value chain data between all the stakeholders, including the designers, manufacturers, retailers, waste companies, and end users. And also the project finish, uh, finishes with the, uh, demonstrating the circular design solutions by a large scale demonstrations program covering technological components at a relevant industrial scale. As Jose commented, with a budget of almost 12 million euros and 30 partners from across Europe, the project provides opportunities for both the environment and the, and the economy by offering business opportunities in the reuse, improvement, renovation, and recycling of composite materials throughout of all supply and value chains. Among many other interesting results of the project, which you can review on our website, ecovalk.eu, uh, eco I would like to highlight here those related to especially the design strategies of products containing compounds, the new circular business models, the innovative materials developed in Ecovolt, including air light non wovens long natural fiber thermoplastics, and particle board vendors, among others. And finally, strategies for collection and recovery of valuable materials, including sorting system. Also, circularity enabled, uh, enabling digital uh, technologies were developed within the Ecovolt project to support the interaction between end users and stakeholders through a software platform that includes software pieces such as quality assurance systems that allow uh, to, to know the requirements, procedures, and regulations to ensure the quality of the products and materials of the project, and uh, a database to manage uh, information related to materials, processes, properties, and costs for eco design in circular economy, and the DSS, the decision support system, who can help the users and stakeholders to take the best decisions on the reuse, remanufacturing, or recycling of the, the EcoVolk products. The project includes more than 12 demonstrators at a different levels, I mean, materials, products, and systems that have been deployed in six different European countries within the three sectors commented. I mean, automotive, furniture, and building and construction. On these demonstrators, Data have been collected to perform LCA and LCC, that is, life cycle assessment and life cycle cost analysis, as well as social LCA and CBA, I mean, cost benefit analysis of the materials and products developed in EcoValk. This final conference on circular composites in automotive furniture and construction includes a selection of the most significant of these results that will be presented by the partners responsible of its development and demonstrations. And I think nothing, nothing else from, from my side, because the most important of the conference are the presentations and the speaker. So I hope you enjoy this conference, which present new approaches to the circular future that we are constructing. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Luis, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I will now uh, introduce to you the, our next speaker. The, his name is Ruud Balkenende. He's Professor of Sustainability at the Faculty of Industrial Design at uh, my alma mater, Technische Universiteit Delft. Um, in the Netherlands, he has been responsible for the design work package uh, of the project. And he's also the originator of one of my favorite quotes, um, a design that does not consider the end of life is not complete. 
uh, one that I have abused much in the communications uh, throughout this project, and one that I am extremely grateful to him for to be able to uh, use. So he will now speak about uh, how the design aspects can be used to incorporate circular strategies into newly designed products. Um, and I will let you tell him, let him tell you all about that. Good. It's down to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jose. I do hear an echo. Maybe someone just seems to have disappeared. Um, I will present the, uh, the design research that has been carried out at TU Delft. And I'm also doing this on behalf of uh, Jelle Joustra, who was the main researcher uh, of this study. Um, in designing a circular economy, uh, closing loops at the level of products and materials seen as an essential step. Uh, composite materials in this respect are extremely difficult because both their composition and structure are usually tailored to a specific application. Uh, products made of these materials uh, are optimized during use but pose real challenges at the end of life. In this talk, I want to present how we develop within EcoWork a design framework for using composites in a circular way. I will start with the most important elements of the framework and then discuss how we filled uh, the details based on interviews, analysis of design cases and research through design. And finally, I will present the resulting design framework and the way in which we shape this to make its use inviting to designers. So in the end, of course, we want scientific insight as a university, but we really also want to be impactful when it comes to affecting actual design. So to develop the framework, the EcoBuild project was a very fruitful environment uh, with several industries from construction to automotive and furniture present, including manufacturers, suppliers, users. Uh, the project really formed a rich environment in which we could address the full complexity of the design challenge. We started our activities with intensive sessions with all the project partners to elucidate their processes, considerations, uh, as well as the opportunities and barriers that they perceive in circular design with composites. We repeated this throughout the project for external evaluation of our results and reflection on our findings. Let me first get to the elements of the, of the framework. Uh, they constitute on the one hand the circular strategies and on the other hand design aspects, approaches, principles. And let me start with the circular strategies. So when you make a product, you add value. And the actual value is in its functional use. It is advantage uh, always, of course, to make sure that the product lives as long as possible. Here, composites often serve a really excellent task. However, if you don't do anything further, at end of life, the value will suddenly drop to zero. And only things like incineration, uh, landfill are options, and both are very undesirable, certainly from a circular point of view. So keeping products and materials as long as possible at as a high a functional level as possible is really a key thing in circular design. So lifetime extension things like maintenance, light repair should be enabled, but at a certain moment it might be interesting to completely refurbish or remanufacture a product. Note that such operations do not only need a design approach, but also a business approach. And the two often affect each other. Here within EcoBulk, we had the fortunate situation that this aspect was also very thoroughly addressed so that we could take full advantage uh, of the development of the demonstrators in both respects. If a product can no longer be kept alive, the same goes for the materials. They should be kept at a functional level. And for composites, that means that you basically would try to maintain the structure of the composite. This means that if we talk about recycling, it's still about functional retention. 
Here, composites are quite unique. This is something that is not present in many other materials. And this really adds something then working with composites to the way in which you approach circular strategies. So this, this basically depicts the circular strategies that we can employ when it comes to closing products and material loops. Then we also need to consider design aspects. And that might look a bit messy. Um, there's many different things that designers uh, consider when designing a product. And they also consider different things in different stages. So it ranges from quite obvious things like material selection, connection selection, uh, to far more complicated things like, for instance, interchangeability. To complicate things, many of these aspects are interrelated. Uh, so connection selection and accessibility, for instance, will both affect disassembly. And modularity with functional units also in turn affects the way in which you would like to set up the assembly strategy. But designers work with these things, usually in an iterative way, and we want to guide designers. And if we want to do that, we need to connect these design aspects to the circular strategies. Then also, finally, we need to consider the specific nature of composite materials, as we want to derive a framework that facilitates circular design with composites. Composites combine a particular or fibrous uh, uh, structure within a matrix. And we can tailor the properties uh, and obtain all kinds of special, often also not flat, but curved objects that are used in products in a very specific way. So when it comes to the materials, we, we, we get a kind of complicated image because both the nature of the fiber or particle can vary uh, and the matrix can vary. Um, so the reinforcements, particle fibers are shown here and vertically the various matrices. And with an eco bullock, we would like to address all these different options when it comes to developing a design framework. When we then look into the projects that uh, the demonstrators are specifically developed with an eco bullock, uh, they address especially the short fibers and particles for all different matrices that we can think of. Um, as we also wanted to obtain knowledge on the longer fibers and the specific structures, sandwich structures, for instance, that are used in advanced composite materials, uh, we also looked into wind turbine blades and currently are still looking into uh, reshaping uh, thermoplastic composites. To discover how the design, the, the design aspects can be implemented, we took a few complementary approaches. It is then good to realize that the design process consists of multiple stages, starting with ideation and sketching and ending with complete embodiment design, and that not all aspects are important in each case. And we also want to differentiate in that respect between the various design uh, aspects that you can work with. An important element in our analysis was the uh, very eco bulk demonstrators. So modular furniture, a dashboard part, and construction elements of which you will hear more later in, in this uh, conference. These cases allowed us for multiple iterations and were developed in close connection to business case development. This puts realistic, but also relatively short term boundaries to the achievable circular strategies. Further, these cases were developed with experienced designers within the companies. So we really get rich design insights. Next to this, we also set up more explorative design case studies. We did this with industrial design students in their bachelor final project, so with novice designers, to test how the framework was used by them and to evaluate the effectivity of the use of the framework. And finally, we also used 
a research through design approach to explore ourselves the opportunities of segmented reuse of the double curved sandwich structures as used in wind turbine blades. All these things were analyzed on many different aspects and often also in deep interviews with the involved designers. So these interviews uh, serve, for instance, to elicit those this design aspects they used in a particular stage of the design project. So what you see here is the various stages of the design project, concept design, embodiment design, detail design, and the stages that were used and for which purpose they were used. So we really get insight in for what reason they think that a particular design aspect contributes to the circular strategy that they were aiming for. Combined with analysis of the design part of the products, so our own view of the final parts, this resulted in annotated, annotated descriptions in which design features of the products were related to design aspects. So specific features are related to a specific design aspect in a way that really pinpoints how the design aspect was applied to the specific case and the design aspects were related to the circular strategies. So with the colored bars, we indicate to what strategy a specific design aspect related. So in this way, we obtain detailed insight in how design aspects can contribute to circular strategies and which design strategies are useful when striving for a particular circular strategy. This resulted in the following design framework, the columns show the circular strategies, the rows show the design aspects, and the dots that you see at each crossing indicate that we have elaborated examples of the use of a particular aspect to achieve the circular strategy. Uh, gray dots refer to our own uh, research to design study, green dots to the equivalent cases, and yellow dots to the student cases. In the case of empty boxes, we are in most cases able to argue why those boxes indeed are not applicable for that particular strategy. So basically, this provides an overview of which design aspects are used in combination with particular circular strategies. That might be interesting from a scientific perspective, but we aim also to be impact impactful to design practice, and then this is not yet really helpful. Jelle Joustra, who was, leading, who, was, who was the leading researcher and is also an expert designer himself, therefore also worked on presenting the results in such a way that it is readily, readily accessible to designers in practice. And that resulted in a small booklet that is currently in print. In this book, first and circular strategies are briefly discussed in the context of composite materials. So a general introduction, and here you see an example for the long life strategies. And in this way, all strategies are introduced in a way that is understandable, accessible to designers. The core of the book is a description of all design aspects. And here you will recognize the same image that I just showed you in a slightly different uh, structure. This is introduced as a kind of overview, uh, which aspects might be considered and striving for a particular strategy. But the core of the booklet is really diving into the design aspects. We focus on explaining and clearly illustrating this, this example, with examples how a particular design aspect can be applied to composites. This is done in a way, in this specific way, because designers are used to working in a visual way and also often using analogies. So we expect, therefore, that this approach, where we describe what is meant with a particular design aspect, but especially also illustrated in a real application, will increase both the accessibility to designers and also be inspiring to them. I hope this book will indeed function as a tool to designers and become the most impactful result of our contribution to e EcoBuildup. But of course, we, we also have contributed to the scientific knowledge in this field, where both the framework and our studies on segmented uh, reuse of composite materials are drawing increasing attention and help to create a focus on circular design 
within also the scientific design discourse. So thank you for your attention and glad to take some questions if there's still time for that. Hi, um, we still do, we still have time. So um, if there are any questions, uh, please uh, put them into uh, the uh, question and chat box. Um, specifically, I would also like to uh, point out that the, um, the design guidebook, which uh, Ruth was just talking about, is available for download from the Ecobulk website. I am putting the uh, link also on the chat right now. And uh, of course, we will also be uh, printing uh, uh, several copies of this, which will be, of course, uh, uh, sent out to our partners. And if you, as part of the audience, also are interested in one of those uh, copies, uh, then please uh, let us know either through our website or you can uh, email us at iswa.org and then or through the chat and we will uh, make sure that uh, we can uh, get those out to you um, in the meantime i do have a question for um Ruth, if i can read it out to you in a second yeah, should i be able to see it somewhere myself because uh, um no but that's okay, okay. Just read it out. <laughs> um the um it was a question from me actually which is why that you can't see it um one of the things that i have often spoken about in the uh equal project is the fact that we uh, uh say that it's a design-led project uh, which is basically based on the assumption that product design mm -hmm. incorporates uh, most of the aspects, if not all of the ones that will determine the actual level of circularity that products are able to achieve uh, in its later life, uh, which has led you, of course, to use the famous uh, quote uh, about uh, considering the end of life. Um, the question for me is, have you noticed from your work with designers and manufacturers that this is true and that there is a central role to be played for designers within uh, uh, achieving circularity? or is that something that also needs more widespread support from other parts of the organization or yeah okay support? thanks for the question uh, say. I, I i think that claiming and uh, say a central role um is is, is is neglecting too much other contributions that are also important but i do think that design uh, plays a very important role uh, at least in enabling the recovery operations um but i also mentioned that that what is very important is the connection to uh, business approaches so the entire business modeling part that also was part of the eco builder project in my view is as important because in the end it is the way in which you set up your business model uh, that actually implements the circular strategy and business model and design affect each other uh, so one cannot be done without the other. So yes, design does have a key role, uh, but it also uh, should realize that, that it can only lead to real implementation when there is uh, intensive collaboration with other stakeholders. Clear. And uh, I guess that's also why there was such a deep collaboration between the design and the business model work package uh, in the original workshops. Uh, yes, uh, indeed. Uh, when we uh, when we started, uh, and that's something that you especially see with say, the demonstrators as developed within the project, because that that that's actual things that that uh, businesses uh, should be interested in to bring to the market, uh, and something that you will not notice, for instance, in the design studies that we did ourselves with, for instance, bachelor students, uh, they are not. Uh, could say hampered by the boundaries uh, of the actual business implementation um, but indeed in the initial stages of the eco build project uh, we very intensively collaborated with the people working on the business modeling um, and the people working on the demonstrators uh, to get to really a set of solutions that 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 can also be implemented in businesses uh, one remark there, because the business focus in that case is relatively short term, uh, it also means that uh, the steps that you take are more evolutionary. 
So there I also think is the added value in the other studies. Uh, they are more explorative, um, but they also provide more of an outlook to where you can get in the end. Um, but from a business perspective, that also requires setting quite different uh, uh, final conditions. Yes. Um, there is one question from the audience, uh, which uh, we've just gotten in, um, which is asking whether there will be any kind of uh, evaluation method that will be based upon the design guidelines. So basically, I, I, to be able to say, it does my uh, design meet the guidelines uh, and is it circular enough or how circular is it? Is that something that is? Yeah, that's a, I, I would say that that, that, that that really touches to one of the key challenges in circular economy uh, at large, not just when it comes to design, um, proper assessment methods. So currently, uh, most of our assessment methods uh, are uh, either based on good feeling or we use LCA in combination with strategies. Uh, and uh, good feeling, of course, is not really satisfying. LCA in combination with strategies is very elaborate and uh, doesn't really help in early design stages to, to evaluate if you're going in the right direction, but might in the end, of course, really show whether at least from an environmental perspective, uh, you made gains. Um, but it is one of our core research teams at the moment to also make steps in circular assessment because we are not satisfied with the current state of it and we also feel that when we can do that better we also will know how we can apply the various design aspects design strategies in a more effective way with improved results so okay. very good question but <laughs> also still a big question yes well so the basic answer is stay tuned. There will be more on that, but not right now. <laughs> it's a work in progress. So I, I would recommend to anybody who's interested in that to follow also uh, the work of the faculty of the TU Delft yeah, uh, and, and Ruud. In, in, in that respect, I think also the iterative character of design is interesting. Uh, um, you continuously evaluate at the best possible level that you can do to make further improvements. So in that, in, in, in that way, the entire eco -build project to me is a important first step in an indeed continuous process. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your contribution, Ruth. Uh, and thank you for jumping in uh, for Jelle. And uh, we will see you later on for questions at the end. Right now, it's time for us to um, go on to uh, uh, the next speaker. Uh, Marku Wilki, he is the CEO of Konenor in Finland, and he's been uh, leading a work package uh, for uh, new innovative products for cir or circular demonstrators. Um, on a personal note, I've always liked to think of him, uh, to compare him a little bit to Don Quixote. On a, uh, he's a passionate man on a personal quest battling windmill waste in this case, um, and he's been rather successful at that. So we are very glad to have his contributions uh, in the project. And uh, he will now give you an overview of um, the demonstrators. So um, in more or less how we put to use those design guidelines and put together a circular prototypes based on other baseline products already chosen. Um, and of course, an outline of his own work on the GFRP based waste construction materials, which he can now tell you all about. So Marku, please go ahead. Thank you, Jose, and uh, welcome everyone to uh, the next uh, 60 minutes where I will be your host uh, guiding through the demonstrations done in the Ecopulk project, uh, which uh, I would uh, recall in the uh, Horizon 2020 call with a couple of words like large scale demonstrations were targeted and uh, definitely that is what we have been heading for and I think uh, successfully we have been able to do it. There will be uh, quite a few innovative products uh, and uh, in different applications and I will be uh, joined uh, in the presentations uh, with uh, my colleagues uh, from 
automotive as well as from the furniture sectors. Uh, first, I would uh, give you <clears throat> a short overview in this uh, work package number four, which is titled uh, demonstrations and definitely about large scale demonstrations uh, in several European countries. A large scale uh, can obviously mean uh, different uh, things. It can be large scale in terms of volume or large scale uh, realized in uh, multiple places or large scale in uh, the number of components being uh, demonstrated. Or it can be <clears throat> all of these uh, in combination. Uh, <clears throat> as you may have understood already, uh, the um, three sectors being uh, dealt with uh, the Ecopol project uh, include uh, automotive, which is uh, managed uh, in the project uh, in uh, task uh, 4.1 by company Meyer uh, in uh, Spain. And then we have uh, another sector named furniture in task 4.2 by Moretti in Italy. And then myself uh, uh, managing the construction side uh, from Finland. Uh, in the beginning of the project 2017, when uh, 30 companies and around 100 people come together, the obvious question to start with is what? And I think that we faced uh, already uh, a couple of times, but now coming to the end of the project after four and a half years in 2021, and after successful realization, we may set the question, what next and by whom? We have uh, delivered uh, several solutions for the market and uh, next year's will show how they will become applied uh, in, in industrial and commercial uh, phases. Uh, about, shortly about the car components uh, by Meyer, uh, there are also other companies involved uh, like uh, Fiat from Italy and Microcap from the UK. Uh, concerning the uh, Meyer approach with Fascia Central Console. It is in three alternative material bases in 2K injection for the production of parts under fully automated conditions. Uh, by Fiat, the trim for central panel in Italy uh, in a mold that has been modified, adding an interchangeable inserts that allow the production of the frame in alternative material materials. Quite a few of those have been developed by company Tecnaro in Germany. In the UK, uh, by company Microcap, dash components manufactured in compression molding using net composites developed long fiber thermoplastics in, in pellet form using various types of fibers like jeweled and uh, carbon, uh, to mention some of them. In the furniture sector, uh, by Moretti Compact, uh, a model of furniture using a cube as a basic element, uh, realized by using particle panels uh, developed by Chaos in Turkey with recycled content and eco-friendly binder by Axel Nobel in Sweden, coated with melamine paper. Uh, using this <clears throat> cubical element for chairs, desks, libraries and beds. We will hear more in details about this development um, after my presentation uh, uh, by Giovanni. Uh, also in the furniture sector, we have air laid non-woven materials uh, by NDT in Italy using a mixture of polyester and wood scraps in sofas, which have been tested uh, by FCBA in France in lab conditions as well as gaining feedback from user perception. This will be also presented uh, by Emily in, uh, in her presentation from FCVA. And then about the construction sector, which is led by myself. And I'm very happy to have had this honor leading the whole task uh, of demonstrations, because I believe 
that the demonstrations are highly valuable for the audience uh, when the materials, uh, the uh, processes do come alive in tangible products and tangible applications where people can see them, where people can touch them and uh, realize what is possible. These are uh, important uh, role uh, as an eye opener for new materials, for new products to come to the market. So in terms of um, construction, it is a question about an innovative new patented technology developed by Koneno to utilize glass fiber waste as reinforcement in recycled composites in uh, thermoplastics, polyethylene, and polypropylene for structural applications. I wish to uh, pay attention that this is the first time in the world that this type of approach has been taken and uh, successfully uh, completed in these demonstrations. Uh, in Corona, we also have extrusion technology and we have been extruding building components, uh, meaning composite planks, beams, pillars, panels, promoting high level use of recycled materials and, and particular involving uh, FRP waste, which is thermoset based, and uh, providing the circularity in multi-layer structures optimizing the product performance versus cost uh, in, uh, in the product structures. Uh, the outdoor structural demonstrations uh, we have uh, realized in Finland uh, uh, at the Kymering MotoGP track infrastructure in the UK with three universities, Warwick, Coventry and Cranfield in uh, shelters in France uh, by FCBA in outdoor benches and seats, together with certain uh, local um, uh, furniture manufacturers, and in Portugal in Lipor Recreational Park infrastructure. Uh, this diagram uh, is displaying the different steps uh, how FRP waste, uh, which is uh, considered today non-recyclable, and there's a huge demand, uh, especially in the wind industry, to resolve the problem what to do with the blades. Uh, in case you are not familiar with the um, wind turbine blades, uh, just to give you an idea how big a blade can be. Uh, the longest blades today being manufactured are longer than 100 meters and their weight is getting close to 100 tons each. So when we have in a turbine three blades, one turbine is providing waste at the end of life uh, close to 300 tons, which is a huge amount to be recycled, to be put back uh, in uh, in work in new application. So there definitely is a need in the wind industry, but the same need does exist in boating, in uh, construction profiles, in sporting goods, uh, aeronautics. There are several different uh, product applications where this same type of solutions are highly necessary. To start with uh, the wind industry scope, uh, we first have uh, the end of life blades and the first step uh, in uh, getting them into recycling uh, value chain is to the dismantling phase at the job site, followed by uh, cutting them into smaller pieces for transportation, either by jet cutting or diamond uh, blade cutting. Uh, then there will be a step at the uh, plant for manual sorting, removing cables, uh, polyurethane foam, uh, such visible metal parts that uh, can be manually sorted and followed uh, by shredding in uh, a shredder into smaller pieces. During the shredding phase, uh, ferrous metals are being removed by machine sorting and uh, at the end we get uh, the waste called FRP. Uh, ready for our process at Coreno to start. Uh, so in, in our processing, uh, the first step is uh, starting with materials weighing in different uh, weight ratios. Together with the FRP waste, we have the polymer, polyethylene, polypropylene. We have different processing and product performance additives, 
and we may even add uh, wood fibers uh, in the formulation if uh, that is of our interest. The process uh, to turn the waste into new substance, meaning recycling, takes place in the agglomeration process, uh, which is producing a new raw material for the second step uh, to produce the product. The second step in product manufacturing could be a continuous extrusion for profiles, panels, compression molding for bigger components or injection molding in 3D components. So in this second project, we have the extrusion in our three lines at Finland. We have been producing different profiles and panels for the application chosen by the demonstrators, typically outdoor furniture and shelters. But there are other applications uh, uh, with a potential not uh, being explored in this uh, uh, project, like uh, if you want to take a one bulk uh, volume application, my uh, favorite would be railway cross ties called also as sleepers. The technology itself, uh, I would uh, title like a production of thermoplastic agglomerates with FRP waste from end of life, as well as manufacturing using existing equipment in the marketplace. It is a simple, low-cost process technique for agglomerated recycled composites at low energy consumption and producing no waste. It has been demonstrated in the EcoBulk, and next step is industrial scale-up by manufacturers uh, starting in Europe, uh, but we do already have uh, connections uh, overseas. Uh, I would say that uh, in next year, so there will be local uh, plants, uh, hopefully relatively small, to activate uh, the recycling process in close to the place where the re uh, material and, and the product for recycling is generated. This is important in terms of LCA, for instance, to eliminate the unnecessary transport cost and effects in the, in the climate. Uh, typical uh, uh, products that uh, have been produced during the uh, uh, couple project have been solid planks and, uh, and boards and uh, panels in, uh, in different thicknesses and uh, beams and pillars typically used in shelter constructions. I would like to highlight also that all products here shown are multi-layer, even though you don't see that in each uh, photo. In one of the photos where the uh, light uh, gray material is on the surface layer and a dark uh, uh, close to uh, black is in the interlayer displays the multi-layer structure concept uh, in our two rotor extruder. Uh, short summary about the construction demos. Uh, we have, uh, as mentioned, Kümering in Finland, uh, which is a new MotoGP track under construction. And uh, Kümering is an external project party without the contractual obligations. But they do have a high interest uh, to collaborate with uh, the Ecopol project because in the original uh, approach for the whole track, uh, environmental issues are highly valued and paid attention to. So it is an infrastructure applications in Nordic freezing called climate and because of the MotoGP with international public audience. Panels, beams, planks, pillars for outdoor benches and flagman shelters. Uh, colored gray and in polyethylene polymer. In the UK, we have uh, a type of uh, shelter uh, original choice and responsibility by Exergy, taken over by three universities. Uh, the Casabo shelters have been constructed with planks, beams and pillars in equal design, equally also in gray and polyethylene polymer. In France by FCBA, collaboration with two outdoor furniture manufacturers, Sinograph and Grosvilex, seats and benches in outdoor public areas, in original wooden design, i.e. this means plaque replacement with French wood waste in the composites. Uh, 
And the second uh, demonstration has been uh, an internal interest by FCBA in a wall module concept with composite panels and plants, replacing typically wooden materials. In Portugal by Lipor, outdoor structures assemblies in the company Recreation Park, three different assemblies. And now we are completely different uh, climate conditions to Nordic Finland. This is south, hot and sunny climate. Uh, and uh, therefore, the polymer has been changed to polypropylene and uh, desired color by Lipor was a beige co uh, color. Flags, panels, hollow square tubes and beads. And finally, also in Spain by Iplans, compounded the Conero agglomerates into dust-free granules and pellets, producing a sellable raw material for all processing uh, manufacturing companies to be utilized as it is. The role of Conero here has been the development and the supply of all extruded composite materials and products to all demo sites. Choice of waste materials, their suppliers and composite material formulations used. I like also pay attention that all extruded composite products, the inner core layer is already containing in-house remanufactured material for closing the loop. Uh, as uh, Jose mentioned, uh, sometimes pictures, illustrations, photos tell more than 100 thousand words. So I have collected here photos from each uh, demo site. And this is from Finland, Kimmering, where the flagman shelters have been constructed. And flagman shelter means that there are inspectors around the track, uh, 20 or even more, where in case of accident, for instance, they uh, are waving a yellow flag uh, for the drivers uh, to pay attention. Uh, outdoor benches uh, for visitors, uh, we have supplied uh, in length of 150 meters, where one bench each is uh, three meter long, while the flagman shelters are about 20 in, in the total volume. And uh, QA codes have been attached to this product so that uh, by your camera, you can get uh, more information about the products uh, in internet. Moving to UK, three, three universities with a quite uh, similar Casabo type of assembly. You see here photos from the construction work, how they become erected uh, and uh, prepared ready for uh, uh, visitors. In France, a different type of uh, seats and benches uh, in, in different uh, constructions, uh, utilizing the uh, boards and panels uh, produced and supplied by Coreno. And in uh, Portugal, in Lipor Park, we have three different uh, structures, a drinking fountain, a rest place around a tree, very innovative uh, design, I would say, and a waste bin shelter. Uh, these are possibly the largest uh, structures we have constructed uh, and uh, taken the most of the uh, volume uh, to be produced. And all successfully uh, completed uh, about already a year ago. So we have uh, uh, climate and user uh, expectations and experience over one year time by now already. Uh, finally, uh, the question is always that when you generate new materials, uh, you need to show that what you develop are also recyclable. And that means closing the loop with the work we have done. And in this sense, uh, we have realized uh, collection of the rest materials from the construction works from uh, polyethylene based from Finland and polypropylene based from Portugal were delivered back to Conenor in, uh, in our place. They were crushed and they were recycled again into extrusion test specimens at Conenor. And in this final loop, uh, we can conclude that starting from uh, the waste materials originally uh, some fractions become recycled uh, up to three times. Uh, we produce test samples, as you see, um, 
the gray one coming out of the extruder die head and uh, these uh, the boards uh, which are hollow boards uh, in uh, dimension 60 by 40 uh, and uh, wall thickness 8 millimeters have been tested uh, by CNR in Italy which gave good results and proved the circularity of these composite materials. So uh, this concludes my presentation and um, if any of the audience have an interest to get uh, more familiar in our technology and the results in uh, Work Package 4, please be in contact uh, with myself, especially in the construction area. And uh, next, I believe that we will be moving on to my colleagues in automotive area. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Marco, for that uh, interesting presentation. It certainly has been a very popular uh, part of the project in all of our uh, exhibitions and trade shows. Uh, so I recommend everybody to look more deeply into that. Um, indeed, the next presentation will be uh, from Mario Dones. He is the head of research and development for, for new materials at Meyer Technology Center uh, in Spain. And he's been uh, indeed uh, working on a 2K injection uh, molding system. Uh, which uh, tries to incorporate more recycled uh, materials into automotive uh, console parts and uh, as I like to joke also gives a whole new meaning to the phrase don't judge a book by its cover so please Mario okay thank you thank you Jose hello good morning for everyone good morning for the audience uh, what I'm going to show you uh, right now is a, a brief summary of the results we got uh, in collaboration with the other partners of the consortium of the EcoBull project. Uh, first, I would like to uh, present you uh, the concept we want, we want to go. Um, the idea is uh, our target is to check the viability, technical viability of uh, the using of uh, recycling materials on uh, um, applications for the automotive sector. In this case, as you see in the middle of the screen, uh, this is an interior application. So uh, the concept, the prototype we want to uh, develop is uh, at the same time uh, a structural, mechanical, thermal, dimensional required and uh, with a high uh, quality uh, thinking on the aesthetics. The idea is to get those functionalities at the same time. Uh, from recycling materials, we proposed at the beginning of the project to redesign the parts. Uh, this is a component. So this is a group of different plastic parts made of different materials. Well, as a concept to uh, show the functionality, uh, we propose to change both the design of the part and the process and to change from a, a, a single material to a 2K component made of uh, uh, in front side. The idea is what the part you see has a, a face uh, in front side. We propose to use prime virgin materials to keep the aesthetic but on back side the structural part uh, we propose we propose to use uh, recycled materials uh, just keep in mind that the, the, we need to uh, assure the functionality of the whole uh, dashboard uh, elements as you see in this picture uh, this uh, fascia uh, is surrounded by different plastic parts with aesthetics and at the same time the, flat, the fascia is a frame that supports uh, some electric and electronic devices and uh, some aerator bend system. So uh, all those, these parts are physics one to each other and to the copy of the car by using uh, some standard fastening systems like a snap fits, 
screws and nuts. So we have to uh, design both the aesthetics, the structural mechanical thermal properties of the um, parts, and we have to uh, assure the assembly and the disassembly of those parts um, keeping, um, for the um, maintenance operations during the normal life of, the, of a car and at the end of the life of the car, just to make easy the uh, recycle and the re um, um, reuse of parts and materials. Let's go ahead. How we would, we did that? Well, the parts, plastic parts, were designed to be uh, produced by the uh, non-conventional injection molding process. The idea is uh, sample parts were produced at the industrial scale using uh, conventional equipment like uh, injection molding machine and a specific uh, injection mold for this part to produce a 2K part and uh, some peripheral, peripheral equipment for the um, uh, control of the global process of the injection of the parts, like uh, automatic systems for feeding the, um, the machine, uh, heaters to control the temperature of the mold, and uh, robotic systems to handle the parts from the demolding step to some post processes. What kind of uh, post processes? Well, uh, for many different functional questions, we have to protect the parts with some paints. The idea is uh, the paints give us uh, some protection against the normal use of those parts, like scratch uh, chemical agents, like cleaning agents or uh, uh, hand cream. Uh, hand uh, creams or uh, joys uh, from fruits, um, uh, abrasion, hot, cold, humidity, and so on. So paints give us the protection, but at the same time, give us the opportunity to modify the aesthetics. The idea is to get the gloss, the color, and the haptic behavior of the component. Well, we, apply, uh, we use an industrial uh, uh, facility, Admire, to apply the paints on the top surface of the parts by using some uh, robotic system with a pre-treatment and spray uh, aerographic spray guns to cover the surface of the parts. After this uh, process, we proposed to, to uh, check the uh, possibility to close the loop. The idea is maybe, maybe you don't see an, uh, nothing because the letters are small in, in, on purpose. The idea is uh, all the parts were made from from different combinations of materials. We check at least three th uh, different types of polymers. Polym um, plastics made of, um, of ABS, plastics made of PP, or plastics made of PLA, uh, bio bioplastics. Some of these uh, materials uh, were um, pro proposed by Meyer from the market so they are prime virgin materials, and the other ones are prototype formulations from Technaro and Covented uh, to check the possibility to use or bioplastics or PP modified with different uh, kind of uh, mineral fillers or fibers, less fibers or natural fibers. So we got at the beginning of the project at least three different versions of this uh, dashboard fascia made of uh, styrenics, or phoenix, and bioplastics. Well, 
those parts after the validation tests were sent to uh, the uh, facilities from uh, Belberg to um, check the possibility to recover the materials. The parts were shredded to get uh, some uh, small pieces, chips of less than a uh, few centimeters in size, and those chips were sent to Einplast to use as a raw material to produce a new pellets. We reformulated, uh, reformulated the, for the materials to get uh, two kind of thermoplastic compounds from recycled materials uh, um, to keep under control both the uh, origin and the amount of recycled material we use. The pellets we got from the Einblast by using a, a, an extrusion compounding standard process were resend to Meyer to use as raw material to produce a new version of the same part in the same process uh, uh, by injection molding and painting. So finally, we got three different versions of each combination of, of material of the same part just to check and to quantify how much recycled content we can use on the same part and what is the difference how is the difference where is the difference from an abs to a pp or pla version let's go ahead the parts were were um, evaluated and uh, the quality criteria we used to homologate an application for the automotive sector so the idea is yes we have run the same test we used to uh, run on a, a standard conventional uh, actual uh, application like a dashboard fascia to verify and to quantify if there is or not any difference between a conventional monomaterial uh, component to a, a 2K non-conventional component. Um, in principle, we see that uh, there's no so much difference from uh, a conventional Virgin prime material to a recycled one. Uh, we find more differences between an ABS, a PLA, or PP. So the idea is that the real performance of the component does not depend on the amount of recycled content, but on the kind of the polymer we use to produce the compound. Let's go ahead. Uh, how we uh, show to the market that this concept of circularity, uh, economic circularity, or uh, functional prototypes works or not? Uh, well, we used to um, demonstrate this. In, at the, our facilities in my technology center in, in Spain. Uh, we used to um, schedule some uh, tech days with our customers, with the car makers, to make uh, trials, to make a test, to verify in situ, uh, playing with the parts, with the support of uh, some uh, technical departments from Maya. Obviously, from the product engineering department, research and development, quality, laboratory, tools of, uh, and the industrial pilot plant to uh, check any uh, doubt from the um, engineers, from the car makers, and to try to identify uh, new possibilities. Obviously, uh, those activities are not uh, on to the open 
public, uh, the general public, we used to run such uh, meetings um, and the appointment with uh, each car maker and the content and the activities we do are uh, protected by uh, non-disclosure agreements. So we have to be careful about confidentiality limits of the technical details we show. And if we go ahead, I would like to just to summarize, so, summary that the, um, the most important result we got from this uh, demonstrator, from this prototype version of the dashboard, FASTIA is that yes, of course, is it possible to produce an, a 2K a component fully functional with a, at the same time mechanical thermal behavior and a status, good status. And then, uh, obviously, uh, the part weight depends not on the uh, amount of recycled content, but on the kind of thermoplastic compound you use to produce it. Uh, uh, the most important point to remark is, well, we can use up to 60% of recycled material to produce a functional component, but we detect some issues depending on, not on the amount of recycled content, but on the kind. For example, if we try to produce a component with a PP modified with natural fiber, due to the presence of the natural fiber, uh, do those materials trend to produce some odor? If you are not very careful during the injection process. And on the other hand, PLA compounds seem to work properly but you have to be careful to control the dimensional uh, deformations, the potential dimensional deformations on the final bus during the, uh, the molding operations. And last but not least, as I mentioned before, uh, those results are under evaluation with our customers, try to uh, use the same uh, concepts of redesigning the parts, redesigning the processes, and uh, using more and more amounts of uh, recycling materials to uh, produce different applications for the same uh, automotive sectors. And uh, I think that this is all from my side. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any doubt, probably at the end of these presentations, we can, we can discuss about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario, for your contribution. Um, uh, since we're running a little bit over time, we'll go very quickly then on to the, our next speaker, uh, John Justins. Uh, he's the Managing Director at Microcab and Professor of Sustainable Transport Design at Coventry University. He has spent decades pioneering lightweight fuel cell vehicles. And uh, again, on a personal note, I still always want to talk to him about his work on the R2-D2 for <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep on bringing that up, but we will save that for later. Uh, for now, uh, please uh, tell us all about the Via Nova hydrogen fuel cell vehicle and how that has played a part in EcoFolk. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. Um, can you hear me okay? I hope so. Move fine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm John Justins uh, from Microcab. I'm the CEO of Microcab. And Microcab is a small uh, to medium enterprise based in Coventry in the UK. And um, as was said then, we are, have been in the eco vehicle sector exclusively since uh, our, our, our founding. Um, and we develop hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles. Um, and we look to um, build small batches of vehicles. We're not a big company. Um, so we have um, 
more ability and scope to be more innovative because of that, I think. And that's been something that has been part and parcel of our, of our journey into the, the eco sector. Um, within eco bulk, um, we've been looking in more detail at parts of our the interior of our vehicles. Um, and we've been looking in particular at a small part um, of our our Vianova vehicle. The Vianova um, is the latest model, really. It's a small, it's a compact hydrogen fuel cell um, vehicle used for last mile delivery or for local um, journeys and so on in urban and peri-urban areas. So um, the whole thesis behind Microcab is um, environmental based and trying to have zero emissions um, on the drive side, which we do have, we, we either use um, hydrogen, which is green hydrogen coming from sustainable sources, um, or the vehicles can also be plugged in their plug fuel cell. So, um, you know, they have a green energy source either way. So looking at into EcoBulk, we wanted to sort of look more into materials because the, the next kind of big issue um, on vehicle design is to do with waste, uh, end of life waste and so on. Uh, as we all know, there's, there's too much waste and this project is very, very interesting in trying to overcome some of those issues. Um, okay, in a very sort of small part initially, but which can be expanded out going forwards. So the, the part that we've been looking at is on the dashboard, it's called the switch pack. On the image there, you can see um, a little display stand which takes the switch pack out of the vehicle with its screen um, and then can be put into exhibitions and so on. Um, um, so that's why that's been created. Um, the particular method and material that we've been using, if you look at the part around the switch pack, that's the brown part with flecks of a lighter color, that is the material that we've been designing with and for within this part. Um, and it's also been made by compression molding, which is sort of a, a, a new process really for us. Um, and uh, it's, it suits this particular material very well. Um, the material we're using is um, jute, which is a, a, a grown material, which is basically a biomaterial. Obviously, it's grown as a plant and the fibers are then um, brought together with polypropylene as the binder. Um, and this material has been developed by Coventive, uh, a partner in EcoBog in the UK as well. Now, the, the screen on above the switch pack does show um, an animation um, about three minutes long of the whole process. So this is part of um, us being able to tell the story of how the design, the material and the process all come together in and around this, this particular part and the sort of the circular design, the design thinking around it. So we've been able to go right back to first principles here in this project and look at how things are joined together, uh, the materials we're using, uh, simplification, modularization um, and, and aesthetics um, in, in looking at this part. So this little display, as I'll show in, in later slides, has been uh, on show um, in, in a public setting in a number of places. And we've had quite a good attendance at those events as well. So um, our part of our job as a small company is to help other companies who want to step into this type of space with circular uh, the circular economy, circular design thinking to help them to, you know, initiate a process into that. And that's that's part of how we see our role in the same way as that we've pioneered hydrogen fuel cell technology. And we are helping a number of mainstream automotive partners now to understand hydrogen better and just make a step into that as we are all um, being challenged to get to, to a net zero position um, going forwards. So going on to the next slide, um, this is sort of showing the, the circular process. 
um, that we've been engaged in, um, in terms of taking the material, which you can see on the left there, uh, these, these are pellets of uh, jute and polypropylene, as I said, um, that is the raw material. Um, we've created um, a compression tool. You can see the, uh, the, the image there. It's a two-part tool um, uh, which, which come together in the process. This compression tool, um, the material needs to be um, heated up, um, not to a very high temperature, but to, to make it more malleable and more, more fluid to, to move into the, into the tool itself. And then under pressure, um, that the part is, is squeezed, squeezed, the tooling is squeezed together to make the part. So it's not, it's a thermoforming process. So it's not a curing process. So the material is, gets, gets warm and then cools again. And the part can be taken out of the, the out of the tool. And you can see at the top, the 12 o'clock there, uh, the, the little frame itself um, before it's trimmed out. That's what we get out of the tool itself. Um, and you can see that we um and you'll see all through this process that we have said this material has a particular aesthetic it has a certain look to it it, it sort of it almost has a sort of natural look because it's, it's sort of a brown color it's got flex in there and it's not unlike actually kind of a wood material oh the slides seem to have changed uh, somebody changing the slides um was that me okay I'll Sorry about that. Um, and the aesthetic of the material, we've decided that we will we will want to keep this. We don't want to paint it or coat it um, um, because we think that the, the aesthetic is a sort of badge of it shows what we're doing. It's saying this is the material we're using. It's, it's an honest uh, approach to the material. I think that's very important um, in this as well for us, um, of course. The aesthetic may not suit every designer, every manufacturer, but I think that going forwards, there'll be a greater acceptance of these kind of materials because they will speak to the audience about the benefits and the environmental benefits of, of using the materials and so on um, in terms of reducing waste and extending life. So if we go to the, the next uh, um, round, the, round the circle to the assembly, you can see it's a complex assembly there's a lot of switches, a lot of small parts, a lot of uh, dials, there's the heater controls, there's the main drive control and so on. So it's a very intricate um, assembly and it was uh, useful in the context of this project to bring all that together because as I said before, within that process, one can revisit uh, how things are assembled, what the fastening methods are and so on, uh, knowing that at the end of life, one wants to disassemble this, one wants to, after it's been used and maybe worn a little, take it away and, and disassemble it. And so you need to be able to assemble and disassemble with a similar ease. You don't want to be gluing something together and then finding when it came to disassembly, it's very, very difficult to actually separate parts. And you want to keep the parts clean and separate so that they're more easy to use and to deal with that end of life. So. Uh, we see the part disassembled um, at the bottom there, and we have reground these parts up back into, into pellets. They've been done um, um, by Coventiv on our behalf to show that the process can be, the part can be remade from, from, the, from the material as well. So that's been an important uh, part of the demonstration. I'm just going now to show um, where we've been showing um, these these artifacts you can see in the two pictures there you can see the little display stand inside um, this is at the uh, Coventry Transport Museum um, this year 2021 uh, Coventry won the UK's City of Culture prize which basically is a 12 months of events and a whole program of arts and design and music, theater, drama, film, um, et cetera, historical material as well. Um, Coventry is quite well known in the UK as the sort of uh, the motor city um, of the UK in many ways. And the Transport Museum is the center of that, that kind of city as well. It's got a vast collection of historical 
artifacts and cars and, and vehicles of other sorts. So within that, we've had a show um, running from July to October called Our Future Moves. And there's been a, a wide array of new technologies on show in that, in that exhibition, including our, our hydrogen fuel cell car that you can see on the right. And um, there've been um, drones and, um, and, and, and autonomous vehicles and uh, a vast array, I say, of new technologies coming out of the, out of the air, out of the region um, on this, in this show. So it's been an exciting show to be part of. And within it, we've, we've looked at, we've shown the demonstrator um, display stand, the switch pack, and you can see bes below the, the switch pack there, the, the pellets that the original um, part is made from. As but that's now closed, closed um, end of October, um, and uh, the attendance has been good, around 750. Um, so that's been part of our, our EcoBolt demonstrator work. Um, Moving on to another event, which actually just occurred um, last week, and this was the uh, UK National Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Conference, which actually hasn't been on for nearly two years due to the COVID pandemic, but was um, restaged last week. And again, we, we took along the display stand, you can see on the, the table on the left, with other artifacts from um, EcoBulk, um, our 20 year life cycle posters. And what we're proposing within um, the circular economy for our vehicles is that we extend the life from, I mean, the life of a vehicle could be as little as seven years, perhaps as much as 11, 12, 13 years. We're saying that there's no reason why a vehicle like this, um, if it's managed properly, uh, shouldn't be able to be on the road for 20 years, but that would mean intervening at certain points in time and remanufacturing the key assemblies and parts that are, are going to naturally um, you know become more worn um, and that that is part of the the work the, the broader work that we've developed within within ecobulk is that whole framework and indeed business case around that sort of model um, of, 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 of vehicle use again uh, we had uh, a because of the whole hydrogen and fuel cell um, sector is really booming at the moment. Um, we had 340 delegates attending that. And I think the last time we had a show, it was around 200. So it shows the increased uh, interest in the sector and um, also the interest in, I made a presentation in particular about the circular economy uh, and, and EcoBog as well at the show, um, which, um, um, we've got a lot of interest in and a lot of follow on um, to help uh, local authorities, councils and other people to understand more about how they might get more out of their vehicles and a longer life. So we've more recently with an EcoBot been looking at, OK, let's take this material further uh, within the interior um, of, of the small cars that we make. Um, so this, these are two uh, new parts which we've um, been designing for the material. Um, uh, the same, using the same jute polypropylene material that we use on the switch pack. Um, we've been creating new tooling and, and new parts. As you can see, the two parts in question are there's a, an, an interior light housing, the top part on the top there, um, that sits up above and between above the windscreen between the two um, sun visors um, and inside it has a little um, LED light um, cluster which which comes on when you open the door um, and the second part down below there is the interior door pull handle this is the place you put your hand in to close the door um, um, when you when you in the vehicle so those are two new parts that we've um, We've been designing again using the same polypropylene material. Our, our feeling is that we like the aesthetic of the material, and I'll be having a single part and assembly in the dashboard. If we can extend that a bit wider, we can see that it, it, it could actually be used uh, quite extensively um, across uh, different areas of the interior of the vehicle. So um, I'll go to what I think is probably um, the last slide. 
Um, what's come out of uh, this whole circular economy thinking is something a bit broader than just the material, although we have the material on show in this. Um, this is a, a fuel cell generator and we use fuel cells in our vehicles. They make electricity from hydrogen. That's broadly the, the process. But in this case, we've taken the small fuel cell from the vehicle and repackaged it in um, a container so that you can provide that electrical power for, for, for remote applications, uh, portable applications and stationary applications. And you can see that, that the pictures of the actual design there, um, again, the design thinking around this is to do with the, with the circular economy. It's about ease of disassembly, about using more of that, the, the, the jute polypropylene material. Um, and um, so I think we, we, what we're seeing here is expanding the, the circular economy thinking into a whole product. And it's a second life as well. So the, the fuel cell could come to it, the end of its life in automotive, but it gets a second life in this um, fuel cell generator and, and can go on, you know, and, and not, not have to be thrown away or, or whatever, because it's probably got still a lot of life in it, even though it probably wouldn't be, it would be taken out of the, the vehicle when it was at the power level that would be insufficient to run the vehicle any longer. You can see there as well, it, it's, it's running off a, a small uh, canister of hydrogen. This is a, a readily available um, system from Linde, the, the gas, gas company, BOC. And so you can buy these, these cylinders to, and they've been designed really to run uh, portable generators like this. So, um, and you can see a, um, a, a little light rig there. You could run power tools from this, a light rig. You could operate, um, a, you know, a sound system at a festival um, and, and so on. So um, we see this as a, as a whole kind of second way of thinking about the circular economy, um, giving a second life um, and, and joining that together with the, the eco materials. So um, I think that's the end um, of, of the talk there. So um, um, uh, just to say that, um, if anyone wants to get in touch with, with microcab you can find us on linkedin on the web and so on the usual usual places and, and do get in touch if you need to know more about what we're doing um, thank you so much john for your contribution and uh for the uh the incredible work you've done for the via nova vehicle and the uh, materials that we're producing in ecobulk um we're running a little bit late so i'll go very quickly on to the next uh, uh speaker who's uh, Giovanni Tossi. He's the R&D manager for Cosmob, a uh, consultancy company that's been uh, working together with Moretti Compact, uh, our partner, with the design challenge of circular furniture. So uh, please, Giovanni. Thank you, Jose. I hope you can, uh, you can hear me. Okay, so good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Giovanni Tosi. I'm representing Moretti Compact, an Italian uh, company producing furniture especially bedroom for children, but also furniture for domestic uh, uh, destinations. So my presentation is about uh, um, a modular furniture concept uh, implemented uh, uh, during the EcoBulk project. And uh, uh, as you can see here in uh, our first slide, uh, the first uh, uh, preliminary idea of uh, Moretti was to create a modular furniture, new modular furniture prototype, prototypes by using uh, uh, a basic uni uh, made with cubic elements of the same dimension, but with um, only substantial difference, uh, differential that is the uh, presence or absence uh, of the extension element. Uh, this is the first, uh, the first idea. Uh, so they produce these uh, cubic elements, uh, these basic elements uh, with the particle boards uh, coated with melamine paper of four star uh, class. And uh, the first uh, output uh, at the beginning of the project was the realization of first prototypes uh, with this uh, uh, main characteristic. I mean, uh, they are made, they were made with recyclable materials. Um, with recycled material as well, because we are speaking about particle boards, uh, they had simple corals and simple lines like uh, uh, white and gray 
in order to have a uh, emotion, emotional durability in times, so to guarantee um, also um, a durability under the aesthetical point of view in, in time, and uh, also the possibility a preliminary possibility to be disassembled and reassembled because they use screws. But uh, as you will see later, this has been a significant issue at the beginning of the project. So at the beginning of the, the activities, uh, Moretti produced this kind of prototype. So we have a library, we have a desk, we have a chair, uh, we have a bed, we have a, a little cabinet by using this concept based on a basic unit uh, that is the uh, cubic element with or without ex extension element. Uh, in a preliminary way, we showed, we presented these uh, uh, prototypes uh, in, uh, in Ecomundo. So it was three years ago. As you can see here, we have uh, a small library, but also uh, a chair and a prototype of desk by using uh, this uh, concept. Then after this, uh, first production, a first exhibition, we decided to make uh, an, evaluate, an evaluation by taking into account uh, all uh, the technical standards for furniture product, especially take into account uh, technical standard for office furniture, even if this uh, uh, furniture is uh, 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 domestic furniture, we decide to keep into account the office furniture because uh, um, for this typology of furniture, uh, we have the most strict uh, uh, technical regulation. So keeping into account this regulation and by making an evaluation um, uh, under the ergonomic point of view, we notice that these prototypes um, needed to be modified, especially uh, the desk, as you can see here, uh, the desk is uh, uh, placed in another way. So um, uh, the assembling of the desk is frontal rather than lateral. And we had also to vary the depth of the workshop and uh, the workshop of the desk and the width of the chair because of uh, ergonomic features and also because uh, we needed to stay to to be in compliance with the technical standards, with the international technical standards. So after our first exhibition, we made some design modification, especially for the desk and for the chair. Uh, another interesting aspect was related to the connection element, because as, pre as previously said, at the beginning of the project, uh, Moretti used uh, glues and screws, but this is not the best solution in terms of assembling and disassembling. So, the first idea was to modify this connection solution by introducing this plastic connection element with the holes. And at the beginning of the project, the, this solution could be uh, quite suitable because uh, uh, it was functional and uh, acceptable under the aesthetical point of view, because we have plastic elements and also the possibility to cover the holes uh, with, uh, with plugs. So this was a first uh, um, introduction of uh, alternative connection elements in order to facilitate the assembling and disassembling activity. As previously anticipated, we had, um, under the design point of view, we had to modify the design, especially of the chair and the desk. And instead of having uh, only uh, one typology of cubic elements, we needed to diversify the basic unit, the cubic elements. So we have a cubic elements as basic unit for uh, the desk and for the chair, and another typology for the bed and the library. Through the combination of these cubic elements with or without extension, we have this uh, uh, different typology of product. So we have uh, a desk, a little cabinet, the chair, and on the other hand, we have a library and uh, uh, the bed. The typology of the, the products are the same, but we needed to modify the basic unit by introducing two different typologies of cubic element. But this was not a significant problem. By the way, um, a further implementation uh, um, was about uh, the connection element, because uh, after making some uh, preliminary tests, we noticed that the plastic elements introduced uh, before, so these plastic elements were not suitable, especially for the uh, the top of the desk. So we need to change another time the connection element by introducing these perforated barrels 
to be inserted in special holes. This solution is uh, extremely simple and it guarantees uh, uh, the solidity of the, the product, especially the top of the desk. Uh, it represents, in fact, a reinforcement. And uh, uh, even in this case, uh, we can use plus, uh, plugs in order to cover uh, uh, the metallic parts uh, for an aesthetic uh, implementation. So this is the final solution in terms of connection elements, uh, and uh, this is the utilization of metallic elements in order to reinforce products uh, in order to guarantee um, an aesthetic uh, um, effect, a good effect, a good effect of the, the furniture. Another um, implementation, another uh, in uh, introduction, is represented by uh, the production of panels by um, made by non-woven compression. We have polyester panels and um, other panels made with wood scrap and polyester elements. And this is a good solution, especially for the upholster of uh, the desk, uh, not the desk, sorry, about the chair and, uh, and the bed. Because as you remember, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, upholster system for the chair and for the bed in order to uh, improve uh, uh, the ergonomic aspects of these of these uh, these elements, and uh, mm, we notice that this introduction, this implementation made by recycled materials, is suitable for uh, this kind of products, uh, and is functional under the ergonomic point of view, but also under the the sustainability point of view because we use completely recycled materials. Um, it is completely disassemblable because uh, we use a sliding padding system instead of Velcro. So this facilitates the uh, assembling, disassembling of these elements. And especially for the for the chair, we need to uh, introduce a fixing system. But, but even in this case, uh, the assembling or disassembling uh, of this uh, system for the chair seat is uh, easy to be removed. So. Uh, this solution made with recycled material is suitable because we use uh, recycled and recyclable materials, but also under the ergonomic point of view, the disassembling point of view, is suitable for the chair and for, uh, for the bed. So we have the final version of the prototypes in terms of design and the uh, successive uh, activity was the final validation uh, thanks to the laboratory test carried out in a recognized laboratory. Before sending the uh, prototypes in demo site, it was necessary to guarantee the, the quality, uh, the ergonomic and uh, the safety, the functionality as well of, these, uh, of all these prototypes. And as you can see here in the table, we performed several tests according to the uh, main uh, technical European standards in terms of quality. And we had, in all the cases, positive results. We made this test uh, for the desk, for the chair, for the library, and for the bed, and for the little cabinet as well. And as you can see in the table, for each product, we performed safety requirement test, stability evaluation, uh, functionality evaluation, especially in terms of application of uh, uh, static and dynamic loads uh, for all uh, the the products and we as previously anticipated we obtained positive results uh, for all uh, the the condition for all the situation so this furniture can be defined as uh, safety as uh, resistance uh, with a uh, high functionality uh, all the furniture that do not tip over, so we have good results even if they are experimental prototypes. Um, and another positive result considering our products is about the, the little cabinet, because this little cabinet um, was made by using innovative panels with low emission, uh, uh, with low formaldehyde emission, with, uh, made with uh, recycled materials uh, and made also with uh, uh, um, eco-sustainable uh, uh, glues. So we perform mechanical test and stability test 
on this little cabinet, and we notice that it is completely comparable with the other standard furniture products because uh, he has a strong mechanical resistance, and also um, it can guarantee uh, uh, a stability, so the sample does not tip, tip over. All the safety requirements are then successful even for this uh, um, uh, prototype, this experimental prototype made with uh, innovative materials. So we had positive results for all the products. Then after the uh, realization of laboratory test in these last days of the project, we are making the last experimentation in each demo site in order to evaluate not only the quality of products, but also the possibility to assemble and disassemble the products. So in order to guarantee the, um, the circularity of these products, because if we think to the laboratory test, in a preliminary way, we have guaranteed a sort of extension of the uh, life cycle of the products, because uh, with the quality of the products, we can, we can guarantee a long life duration of the products. Under the aesthetical point of view, the utilization of um, simple line and simple shapes and neutral colors, so we can guarantee an emotional durability. So in this case, we can uh, uh, ensure the long life duration in terms of quality and aesthetical feature of the products. By the way, it's important to guarantee the uh, recover and the reuse of the product before of the recycling, because the products, the furniture products in general are made with uh, recycled materials and they are recyclable. So the, the, the main aspect, the main objective of the product is to guarantee the reuse and the, the, the recovery of the product. And this is possible by the assembling and, dis and disassembling uh, process. And during this day, we are now evaluating this possibility. We are evaluating this possibility by using a sort of checklist, a sort of checklist um, where the, the end user um, can indicate uh, a sort of score, uh, a rate of the different uh, um, feature in terms of assembling and disassembling. And even in this case, we are having in these uh, last days some uh, interesting results, some positive results, because uh, according to the end user opinion, the possibility to assemble and disassemble these products are quite, uh, quite easy. So this is uh, the final, uh, our final uh, uh, experimentation. My final um, aspect is related also to the possibility to certify these products according to, to a new methodology, so a new certification methodology by evaluating the circularity of, uh, of the products. According to this methodology, we can quantify in, um, in a term of percentage, in a percentage, the possibility uh, the circularity of the of the product. So consider that these products are made with recycled materials. They are recyclable. They have a long life. Uh, they are a good quality, and uh, uh, they could be assembled, disassembled. We can reach a sort of uh, um, high percentage in terms of circularity measured essentially in terms of uh, uh, material balance. So this is uh, uh, a general of overview of the. Uh, furniture sector, uh, uh, considering the activity carried out by, by Moretti Compact. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Giovanni. That was very interesting. I'm sure that the students will be very happy with their new <laughs> accommodations. Very <soon>. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're moving on to our next presentation from uh, Emily Bosan. She's the head of research and development uh, in the furniture section of the Institut Technologique FCBA in France. And she will tell you all about the work that she has done with creating outdoor furniture using the construction materials that Conor has been uh, providing. So, Emily, uh, please. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. I guess, are you going to show the slides um, I have for this presentation? On the slides. There you go. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh, there uh, seems to be a small issue. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> um, 
let me check where are your slides maybe otherwise you can share them from your side we have them It started. Upload. All right, they're being uploaded. Um, I don't know. Do you want me to try? Um, yes, please. Um, I'm not sure what happened. The, the first slide showed up, and then it suddenly went into a loop. Oh, I think it's okay. The, the, apparently, it's okay now. There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> there was some confusion there. Um, okay, because I, I don't see the right slide. You don't but, see the right slide? No, no. But maybe you can change the size for me, if you yes. agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. So uh, this is a short presentation of the kind of experiment we wanted to try on the composites that were developed by the partner Coninor. So in the first slide that you can see, we had s several experiments. And the first one was unfortunately not quite satisfactory because when we took, we had a look at the life cycle of the product we wanted to design, which was urban furniture. The first idea we had was to have uh, um, the least of different material as possible. So what we wanted, what we wanted to do is tend to work with 100% only with composites. Um, so what we tried to do with the first pro prototypes were benches and um, the results was that the design was quite poor and we had very solid but also very heavy products. And um, if you go to the next slide, we also had some mechanical difficulties with some of the plants we had received with the mechanical test that we had uh, received. And so what we managed to do was to work on a very classic design of urban furniture that can you, you can easily find uh, um, in outdoor environments. So what we did on the next slide is that we made several prototypes of benches for adults and for children and also a chair. And we installed them in a private race due to the COVID situation and we left them for several months so that people could use them on a daily basis and we had some volunteers who accepted to answer a few questions and to run a few tests on the products so what you can see on the next slide is that we had 16 people uh, willing to answer these questions we had a perfect equity between women and women and they had several questions to answer about their general perception of the different furniture they could be uh, they could be using the first question we asked was very gen general and we asked them what they felt about the aesthetics of the products and the results were quite um, interesting because most of people thought that the aesthetics was pleasant or suitable. And uh, the sensation of, of touching of the composite also was, uh, was pleasant to a majority of the volunteers. Um, on the next slide, uh, we only put here a few questions they had to answer. Um, what was also very interesting, and that was a surprise uh, regarding the design of the furniture, uh, we asked them how they felt about with the comfort of the pro different kind of products. And for all of them, um, the response, the answers was that the furniture was very comfortable. And uh, at the very beginning of the experiment, people did not know what the composition of the planks were. So we asked them what they thought they were made of. And we were quite surprised that some of the answers 
uh, were related to the recycled content, but most of the uh, respondents identified that the planks were, was, were a composite and that they were made of different uh, materials, including uh, some wood elements, even if at the surface you, it was not easy to identify these, um, these elements. Uh, we had another question afterwards, is that knowing now the composition of the material, if they thought that it could be suitable to be used in different kinds of outdoor environments. And then again, we had some interesting uh, answers showing that there are some um, differences between uh, the perception of using these different products in different kind of urban or outdoor and private or public uh, environments. Um, and the last one of the last question that they were asked was if they felt that the product was strong, resistant and long lasting. And then again, we had a very uh, big proportion of answers saying that they thought that they, this was a product that could uh, last a lot of years. So that was uh, some quite positive uh, results that we had during these experiments. Um, so, as some main conclusions, what we showed with this experiment is, is that the composites that were developed are suitable for urban furniture uh, use. Um, there are some technical requirements which are quite strict for this category of products, but nonetheless, it can be um, possible to use these uh, uh, materials if you work on the design of the products. And uh, we also were able to identify some ways of improvement uh, of to, um, about the design of the products to optimize uh, both technical and environmental uh, performances of the products. And what we saw that is that there's also area and space for design thinking to positively uh, highlight the presence of recycled material because, it, because there's still a lot to do to make people understand why recycled content is um, suitable for different kinds of products and how it can affect positively uh, one industry. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Emily, for the contribution and uh, for keeping it short. We are running a little bit uh, out of time, um, but uh, you will see Emily later on when we go into the uh, life cycle uh, thinking uh, section. So uh, thank you, Emily, and we'll see you later. Um, right now, I think it's time to take a little break. Uh, it's a little bit later than usual, but um, I suggest if everybody could come back uh, in 10 minutes time, uh, then we can all get a little cup of coffee and then we will launch into the uh, um, next presentation, which will be uh, on business models, the work that Oakdina Hollands has been uh, done. And um, uh, I'm uh, also seeing that, uh, please, you should have received a second link to join the second part of the conference. Uh, it's been split up into two sections. So please use the second uh, link that you have received uh, so that you can join us for the business models presentation that uh, uh, Olivia Pertham will be giving it to us. And we will see you then at 11.15. So uh, thank you again for your attention and we will see you in a few minutes. <laughs>